Welcome to Fix My Game presented by Future Kimonos. Today we're here with the ADCC World Champion, Giancarlo Budoni. Giancarlo, huge 2022 for you. What's the experience been like so far to be an ADCC World Champion? Um, the experience has been great. Uh, the whole lead up to ADCC was awesome. Um, that was a big uh, goal that I had set for myself uh, since winning the trials and even before then. Um, but now that it's all said and done, I'm looking forward to the next one and uh, the challenges ahead, so. Not very often I get to roll with an ADCC champion, so. Uh, we're gonna maybe get a couple rounds in today yeah. and then have you kind of break down my game, critique my game a little bit. Let's get to it. Awesome, let's do it.
Crow, any general thoughts on Corey's game? Um, his good guard retention is giving me trouble. His pommeling his legs. Um, but uh, overall, his game's pretty good. Um, obviously, I have a size advantage on him, so I uh, tried to exploit that as best as I could. <laughs> Man, John Carlo, that was a, a really like two, a couple of fun rounds. Um, I feel like you let me work. You were very, very kind of patient and controlled and just kind of waiting for the moment that I made a mistake and jumping on it. One, one thing I noticed um, that kind of caught me off guard was, you know, you jumped on a guillotine, but the, the gripping sequence that you used, you kind of went elbow to elbow, and I felt trapped in a way that I don't normally feel on a guillotine, where like on maybe a, a high elbow or a different style of guillotine, there's a way out. Mm -hmm. But the way you were gripping your elbows, I felt like any way I would normally try and escape my way out, I was blocked in. Yeah. Can you explain to me maybe the way that grip works or yeah. how you set that up? The main uh, thing was the wrist position. So when you go into guillotines, regardless of how you get to them, there's going to be a low wrist position and then less common one is the high wrist position. So the reason why the, this one works so well, it was just an arm and guillotine, but my, my wrist was in, uh, I was in a high position. And this gets you a lot more coverage of the carotid artery. And the, if you noticed when you, you did the right defense, which is try to get past my knees and come to side control. But even from here, you're getting finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, because of the high wrist position, I can strangle you. Okay, because I have both carotid arteries. Where if I had a low wrist, it's gonna be a lot more difficult for me if you just start jumping across my body to finish you. Okay, it's a lot harder for me to finish cause, just because I don't have that same coverage of the carotid arteries. So the key was really the high uh, wrist position. That's what made it tight. And I just followed you through, um, rolled with you, et cetera, et cetera. And that's second hand, like even though you have the high wrist here, it looks yeah. like you're not really high elbow finishing or like yeah. th this hand was kind of just yeah. hanging out. I down think in the end I switched to a high elbow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I had an arm in initially. And I grabbed my elbow mm -hmm. just because it's a tighter grip and I could reach it. My arms are, are, are long. And, but depending on who your opponent is, the, main thing, the second hand isn't as important. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going against somebody who's a lot thicker or maybe my arms are short and I wasn't able to grab my elbow, I could just place my hand pretty much anywhere. I can come wrist to wrist. I can grab a hold of your own uh, mm -hmm. tricep. I can just grab my own forearm. I won't always be able to reach the elbow. But because of the high wrist position, it's such a tight finish that the second hand is far less important. So it's very much the secondary element. Yeah. So I could do the same thing, but I see I, fin I ended up transitioning to a high elbow. Mm -hmm. So I could finish this from a variety of different positions. So the main thing is when I want to go get to the, to, the, uh, to the high wrist is that I have to shift my head to the opposite side of your body. So I stand here and I'm here in a front headlock. And the main thing is if I try to get it from here, it's hard to get my hand in the high wrist. So similarly to how we go to rear nakeds, we want to try to get our elbow in front of the chin. It's kind of a similar concept and the hand all the way behind the neck. So I do that by taking my head and I just shift my head across his spine until I can get my, my thumb all the way behind his neck. And then from here, whether or not I want to go high elbow, whether or not I want to go arm in, it doesn't really matter. The main thing is that I got the high wrist and because I have the high wrist, I personally prefer arm and guillotines, whether it's high or low, but a lot of people like high elbow guillotines. And so because of the high wrist, I'm gonna have a much uh, stronger uh, finish as opposed to having the low wrist where it's more important. My mechanics are a lot more important. My body position is a lot more important because everything has to kind of be right for it to work. If you're trying to get the high wrist with your head on that side, Okay, it's a lot tougher. Yeah. But the second you just shift your head across and you punch the elbow through, yeah. now you can already see that it's strangling. You can just hear it by my voice. Mm -hmm. And now from here, if you want, you can grab your elbow with an arm in. And now from here, you can just finish me right from your knees. And you can tell that even if you set the guard and I jump across your body and I get the side control, even if I hug your body, you got to put on a squeeze and then you can finish me here. And that's because my frame essentially against your neck is staying in place. Yeah, because you cover both carotid arteries. Cool. So let's say you had a low wrist, uh, low wrist arm and guillotine, just like a traditional arm and guillotine, the one everybody knows. Now from here, if you sit and I manage to beat your knees, you can yeah. squeeze as hard as you want, go ahead. But you can see that even, you can even hear it in my voice, go ahead. I can talk rel relatively easily. Mm -hmm. But if you contrast that to when you did the high wrist, if you did the high wrist again, Good. And now from here, you can already hear that it's getting tight. Even if I hop across your body, mm -hmm. go ahead and put it on. <sighs> it's a lot tighter. Because you get that double coverage of both carotid arteries. That's a cool detail. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I really feel like is, yeah, when, when I'm low-risk guillotine and you hop across my body, your head is now yeah. against me, right? Yeah. Whereas 
when my elbow is high, yeah. like you're still running into my forearm. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. And uh, yeah, that's all John. He kind of developed that uh, high risk guillotine. Nobody, uh, no, I've never seen anybody do it before him. Uh, one thing, John Carlo, that um, I think you've kind of become famous for after your, what was it, semifinal match, right? Yeah, so nice. Semifinal ADCC against Owen O'Flanagan was that really slick kind of bolt cutter foot lock you hit as he was fishing for a heel hook. Can you, can you walk us through that? Yeah, so um, it's off of a cross ashi when your feet, you could hit it from a variety of different positions, but the way that I hit it was when his, his feet were in here and uh, he was going in and attacking my leg and we were in this position and I was able to just go in and take his feet to the outside so I pummeled my foot to the, to the outside and I started splitting his legs here. Um, and so from here, this is just a variation of a toe hold, okay? So it finishes similar to a toe hold but it's a lot stronger just the way that I, that I, that I lock my hands. Um, we go in and we take this hand, palm up, okay? So I started pushing the leg away. The more his feet are separated, Obviously, his ashigurami is more compromised. And so naturally, he's gonna wanna back heel and wanna try to bring his legs in. So I started pushing, pushing, pushing. I felt the tension of his leg coming in and I fought it enough to bring the leg back. And as soon as the leg came back, I took my, my, uh, my form over the toes. And I try to line up my form right at the beginning of your training partner's toes, okay? I don't come too high where it sometimes can slip off the top. I like to take, just like you would with a regular figure four toe hold, I would just take it in line with his pinky toe right here. And I shoot the other hand underneath and it's all about locking up wrist to wrist. So from here, if you lock up palm to palm, it's pretty loose. So instead I go wrist to wrist, like a butterfly grip, and I pull his ankle right into my chest. So now when he goes to extend the leg, he goes to turn out, it's tough. And because I, his, he's, he's the one initiating the ashigarami, and because I have this stomp on his leg, it's hard for him to fight me with that second leg, whereas if I didn't have that, he could sometimes go in and start kicking and separating my hands. And also it pins him in place. Okay, so it makes it a lot harder for him to turn out of it. Okay, because ideally, like with, a, like with any toe hold, he would want to spin out of it. Okay, so this makes it's not impossible for him to spin out. He can if he really tries. And if he does, he gives me back exposure. But when I want to go in and finish, I go in and I am going to give some degree of crunching his toes to his butt. But it really comes down to me rotating my, and pulling my right elbow to my, to, my, uh, to my hip. So my right elbow comes back to my right hip. And then from here, we get a tight toe hold. So I bring everything in tight. I crunch the toes in, but what really finishes it is the rotation. And then we get that finish. So it comes on a lot stronger than a regular toe hold, like a regular uh, figure four toe hold where I physically grab his toes just because of the position of my... And now from here, you go and you're hiding your heel. You start pommeling your foot to the inside of my two feet and you start pushing my two ankles away. So from here, you take this ankle to the outside, start pushing it away. Now, as you start, dr the, the, the leg starts drifting back in, just take your forearm, the back of your forearm, yep, right in line with the pinky, good. And now shoot the other hand underneath and lock up wrist to wrist. Now think about taking your chest and stomach over the ankle. Now, right elbow comes in towards me. The main thing is your left elbow pulling to your left hip. And now from here, you get a good finish. So curl your whole body over it, good. And then from there, you hit that rotation, nice. That's a really interesting detail that yeah. I, I didn't feel when you did it, but I felt like I needed it yeah. when I did it is covering the, the heel of yeah. my chest because it I felt like here, yeah. I can see all the ways you can get yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Here, here I feel you like make it's it, way stronger. I can't push through because if you're too loose with it, especially early on when you do it, I might be able to push my foot through and start playing around here. So initially when you go in, lock up and try to put a bend in my, in my, in my, in my ankle. Good, exactly. And lock up wrist to wrist. Good, yeah, exactly, good. And now from here, you take your whole body tight and now just hit that rotation, tap, nice. It feels really powerful. Like yeah. I feel there's a, there's a lot more range of motion that I have that's untapped in there. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Did you expect to finish that when you, when you went for it? Did you expect to try and just get something going? Um, I wanted to finish it and then I thought that if he was able to turn out that I would go ahead and chase the back. So that was kind of my thought process. So I, I, what, I knew as soon as I locked it that it was tight and that I would be able to put pressure on it because I could feel when I put the bend, when you put the bend in the foot, you know that it's going to be tight. Um, but he stayed committed to, to the leg entanglement, didn't try to turn out. That's what allowed me to, uh, to finish it. Um, but if he would have tried to fight hard and turn, he may have been able to slip it and then I would have come up and uh, looked for the back. So I was ready to, 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 to chase the back exposure. Um, what you were doing from these positions, well one, uh, you, 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 you got to try to control my thumb. So I was really 
able to turn the thumb out very easily. But also I felt like you weren't able, you, you didn't pin my upper body down. So I was really gotcha. able to, 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 to move my upper body easily. Okay, so when you have a, the leg in this position, generally I like to throw the leg over. If you have it, he, if you have it here, it's only if I was gonna go and attack a, a Yoko Senkaku. So I would take uh, Kimura on this arm. And then now if your legs end up in this position, you're better off now just letting me sit up shooting the leg through and then using this top leg to put return me back down to the mat and I'm locking up this triangle. And then you have Kimura options on this side, you have triangle on this side. Um, but generally speaking, to stop the turning escape, you want to, top, to, to, to block my shoulder on the top. So there was that one point where you, had a good, you did a good job of bringing this, this, uh, this leg over, mm -hmm. but most of the time your leg was in this position. Okay. And so from here, it allows me to turn out. So you go, you go and do it just like a hitchhiker. Yeah, you see, you can turn out. Mm -hmm. And so to avoid the turning escape, you want your feet on this side because now I pin the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So as you go and you start looking to turn out, I keep your elbow on this side. And when you go to rotate, that stops your shoulder. I'm running into this. Yeah, you run into this. So I block the shoulder on this side. Mm -hmm. And then also when you go to finish the arm bar, you're controlling down here by the, uh, by the wrist. Try to control the thumb because mm -hmm. the thumb dictates where my elbow is going to point. Okay, so you can always rotate the thumb. So even if I control the wrist and you go to turn out, I can't stop your thumb from turning. Mm -hmm. So I always generally try to control the thumb and you have a hand that can pull and the other one that can push and you're always gonna be able to reorient the, the hand to the proper, to the right hip. So you're saying this for, yeah. for on this side? Here, to stop the turning escape. You bring it this way, cross your feet. Cross, cross with the, the head side. Yeah, on top. top and now plant the feet and back heel, your heels towards you, yeah, exactly. So now when I go to turn out, Pull this elbow to this hip, to the inside yeah. hip, and this will stop my turning escape in my tracks. And now I'm forced to start coming back this way, and then you can start switching to other types of uh, to other types of arm bar uh, setup. So I would say just um, you got to play around with different uh, like leg positions from the arm bar. As like every leg position is going to have a different strength and weakness. So sometimes when you run into the strength of it and I start switching my escape, you got to switch your leg position. As you're saying, like put, yeah. the, put the foot on the other side of the yeah. head. Yeah, exactly. And obviously like I have a lot longer legs, so it's hard for, for it's sometimes it's harder to get to get rid of them. But you got to try to avoid situations where my feet are between your legs and where my feet are connected to you. So if I'm standing in front of you, mm -hmm. or sorry, if you're standing in front of me, any time that my feet are either pointed directly at you or connected to you in some capacity, Capacity, that's going to favor me as the guard player. So your whole thing is to disentangle my feet. Those are my primary, my primary weapons. And if you can create situations where my feet no longer point to you, and you move out to an angle, now this forces me. There's certain things that I could do, like there's certain ways that I can enter into your legs. But for the most part, it forces me into a scenario where I have to start bringing my legs back in front of you. So controlling my feet more and not allowing me to connect my feet so easily. The second I go in, I start connecting my feet now, so I can start off balancing you with tripods, or even if I'm seated, as long as you're directly in front of me and my feet uh, control the space between your legs, I'll always be able to connect you off balance you, and that's when I can start pulling you in, getting into your legs, etc. So your whole, the, my primary points of contact and my primary weapons are always gonna be the feet and the hands. It's hard for you to control my hands, but if you can control my feet, it's kind of irrelevant what I do with my hands. And so if you can control my feet and create situations where my feet aren't directly pointed at you when you come out to an angle, even just a subtle angle like this will force my legs to start coming in. And now you can start fatiguing me with side to side pressure and so, then working your way into a tighter pass. So this initial angle to get your feet not pointed at me, yeah. I should be expecting to go back to the other side exactly. or come in to switch an angle somehow. Yeah. And if at any point I do manage to make contact with you at some capacity, you want to look to immediately strip it off and then reclaim that angle. Good. Exactly. And so that's just kind of like a, a habitual thing. So you're doing the, the moves right, but like habitually you're, you're just kind of accepting me connecting to you. So just kind of like not accepting my, my connections and then looking to strip it off. And then not just strip it off, but don't stand directly in front of me, where when we do go in and make contact, this will favor me. Instead controlling my, my, my ankles and then moving to an angle where now I'm forced to regard, where I don't have offense from here, or very little offense from here. So I found that most of the time that you were setting up attacks from your guard, it was either via like straight Ashi or um, that, that off balance, like that tripod yeah. sweep. Is that because of where I was standing directly in front? Yeah, yeah. Got Any it. of my attacks, for the most part, m the majority of my attacks are gonna come when, I, when you're directly in front of me. That's when I have the most, the most ability to attack you. Yeah. Whether it's 
pulling you into ashigaramis or with tripod sweeps so I can push you. So I have a lot of strength pushing on the legs. The second you move to an angle, now my legs are in a pulling, are in a pulling motion. And that's when the legs are the weakest pulling. Legs are always strongest when they're pushing. So if you're directly in front of me, I have the ability to push you with my legs. The second that you're, you're directly in front of me, if I start playing in here, it's hard for me to pass your guard, especially Nogi. I don't have the ability to pull myself in with collars, etc. So you just focus on moving to an initial angle. And as you go to re-guard, I'm just constantly looking to just dance around the feet. And I just redirect your feet every time you go in and re-pummel the legs. I just move around the legs. I start moving side to side. If I ever find myself directly in front of your legs, I'm always looking to step around and move to angles. And you can do this in a bunch of different ways. You can switch grips. You're, not, you're never gonna stay with one grip for too long. You're always gonna be switching grips. But the main thing is you just create the habit of not letting the feet point directly at you. And when you can do that, if I stay here, it's hard for me to pass your guard. And you see a lot of people, especially Nogi, because you don't have a lot of grips to work with. We throw the legs by, and then they try to aggressively knee slide or aggressively Toriando pass. And in that time, there's so much space that I have to cover that I come directly onto your frames. Now you scoot away, you recover, and it's slippery. And then as time goes on, it gets more and more slippery and gets more and more difficult. So instead, I use the side, the side pressure just to create that initial angle where I'm forcing you to regard. And with every regard, you're, 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 crunching, you're, you're crunching your abdominals, you're recovering, you're constantly in a, in, a, in a position where you're tense and you're pulling your knees to your chest, which over time can be exhausting. Basically doing crunches the whole time. And so I'm just looking to redirect the legs as you go to move around and just play around the legs and I just move freely. If at any point you grab an ankle, I just like to kick the ankle free and move around. I stay around the legs until eventually I can work my way into positions that are a little bit more tight. Okay, so I work incrementally closer and closer to you, kind of trying to fatigue you, but trying to look for openings. With every angle that I get, it gets more and more difficult for you to turn in and face me. Awesome details all around from that, that foot lock, the guillotine, the arm bar, uh, just the, the regarding and the, the, the the guard passing, um, yeah. the guard passing details. Thank you for having us, man. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. It's time for the 88 kilogram final. Giancarlo. Athletes will often overemphasize or overestimate an opponent's ability based on the introduction they have. People looked at John Carlo previously as just this positional guy that wasn't very dangerous. I think it's safe to say that Giancarlo has made more progress in this last year with us than he did in his entire career combined. He completely revamped this entire game. And as time went by, started to create a very new vision in his mind. I punched my ticket. Fighting out of the blue corner! I just beat the Black Belt World Champion and the last ADCC Champion. It was my fucking weekend.